Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be revisiting some of my 2020 five-star predictions. Now, this is a video that I did back in 2019 where I went through my physical TBR, the books that I personally owned, and decided which books I thought were most likely to be five-star picks, five-star reads for me. I endeavored to read those in 2020. Did it happen? No. Did I watch that video this year and decide that I was going to read the rest of those books? Yes. Have I done that? Mostly yes. And so in this video, I'm going to kind of talk through those five-star predictions and let you know if they were actually five-star reads. Uh, this is something that I want to do going forward for 2022. You'll see a five-star predictions video from me sometime in December, but today I'm going to actually tell you if any of the <laughs> predictions I made were good. So forewarning you, I have not actually made any notes for this video. Probably won't be able to remember all of the character names. So if that bugs you, sorry in advance. We'll see. We shall see if any of these hold up. First up, we have Girl Made of Stars. This is actually the last book that I read for this video, and I read it Saturday. Today is Monday when I'm filming, and I have to say this was a five-star read for me. It was truly fantastic. It's about our main character, Mara, who has a twin brother named Owen. Mara is starting, I don't remember what year of high school, but she's starting high school. She comes to find that her brother, Owen, sexually assaulted one of her best friends named Hannah, and she's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because she loves Owen, and she doesn't believe that he could have done something this horrible, but she also knows that she wants to believe her best friend. So the story is about Mara grappling with that and also revisiting some of her past trauma and kind of trying to reconcile that. It's a short book, it's only about 300 pages, but it was incredibly impactful and it's one that I don't think that I will ever forget. It's a book that I've had on my shelves for a while and it's one that I've avoided reading specifically because of the subject matter, and I won't lie to you, it is very hard to read at times. Um, it's a very emotional book because of the subject matter, but definitely wasn't gratuitous in any way. I feel like uh, it really hit on really important topics. I feel like this is a story that anyone could really get something out of, but especially those people in high school. This is definitely a book that I think is geared towards a high school age demographic, and it's a fantastic YA contemporary that I do think holds up. So this was a five-star prediction, and it was a five-star read, so off to a good start. And then we don't have a, a good one next to follow it. Uh, we have Heartless. This is a book by Marissa Meyer, not in her. Is it Lunar Chronicles? I think it's Lunar Chronicles series. I was kind of hesitant to pick this one up. I got it kind of on a whim. Like I purchased the book on a whim because it was beautiful because I'd seen the naked hardcover and I was like, I have to have that on my shelves. And then my friend Heather from Effort 80 Reads read it and she loved it. She recommended it. And I was like, you know what? Okay, whatever. I'll pick it up. Didn't love it though. Gonna be honest, I DNF'd this book pretty early on because despite the storytelling, I couldn't connect with any of the characters. I think this was supposed to be like an Alice in Wonderland retelling where she like falls in love with a Mad Hatter type character. I didn't like it. I don't know. It just didn't work for me. I don't have much else to say except for this was a DNF and it was so long ago to be honest that I DNF'd this book that I don't remember much else about it. So moving on. Wow. Okay. We do have a book that I do remember and I didn't like. Ask the Passengers by A.S. King. This book I gave two stars to, which is super surprising because the only other A.S. King book that I've read actually that's untrue. There's another one that I've read that I also didn't like. The first A.S. King book that I read was Dig. That was a five-star book for me. It was one of my favorite books of the year when it came out. Um, So I just assumed that all of A.S. King's work would work for me. She does this like very surreal thing in her writing that uh, hits on real world issues at the same time. Like it's very masterfully done, but I just didn't like Ask the Passengers. Our main character was so unbearably unlikable and I just didn't, I just didn't connect with the book at all. This book was written a little while ago and it definitely is, a book that I think could connect with some younger readers, but it didn't connect with me. It deals with topics of sexuality and acceptance, and I just didn't feel like it really said anything super new, and I didn't like the relationship between our heroine and her love interest. Her love interest was very, like, I don't want to say gaslighty, but there was definitely some, like, emotional manipulation going on there, and while there was an apology at the end of the book and they kind of stayed together, it wasn't something that I liked or thought was a good example of a healthy relationship, and I feel like it was trying to peddle itself as that, so it wasn't a book that worked for me. Don't know how I feel about it. King's work at this point. One book I liked, two books I really didn't actively like. So I don't know. I think I have like two other books on my physical TBR by her. So I, I will read them at some point. They're not, however, going to be in my five star predictions video. So that definitely taught me something, I guess. Next up is another DNF. Uh, okay. I'll give you The Sun by Jandy Nelson. I, to be honest with you, started this book today and I just didn't feel compelled to finish it. I could have pushed this video back a couple of hours to finish that book and I considered it, but after I got about 20% in, I determined that it wasn't really worth my time, to be honest. Now, it's not a terrible book. It's about uh, a pair of twins in high school. And at the very start of the story, their mother is trying to get them into this like creative high school, this like arts high school. We find out that the twin who wanted to go to the high school doesn't get in and the twin who did want to get into the high school doesn't get in. I think the mom has also passed away. There's going to be a lot of emotion here. There's going to be a lot of turmoil. I just didn't really want to read that. I had just read Girl Made of Stars and before that I read another contemporary that was really hard hitting and I was just like, 
yeah, I don't know if this is something that I want right now. And on top of that, the writing style of the story was very colorful, not in terms of like language usage. There weren't cuss words is what I'm trying to say, but a lot of metaphor and I don't even, I, you know what, you know what? I don't have a degree in literature. I don't know the actual terms to describe what the writing did. It's just not something that I love. For example, there is a point, there's a period in the book in which one of our characters describes himself as like vomiting neon goo or something. And that doesn't actually happen, but they're using that to kind of express how they're feeling and their emotions at, at a certain moment in the book. Uh, it didn't really work for me. And I don't know if I carried on with the book, if it would have had the emotional impact that's supposed to have given that I didn't love the writing. Next up, we have The Last Repose of the Sea by Julia Drake. Another way contemporary that I gave three stars to. The reason I put this one on my five star predictions was because so many of my friends really enjoyed this book. Now I'm realizing that those friends and I don't necessarily share the same taste in books. We, we share romance taste, but not necessarily taste in YA contemporaries, which is to say that I just don't really love YA contemporary anymore. No fault of the genre. It's just something that I don't connect with personally anymore. And this book was really proof of that. This story is about another set of like twins or siblings, can't remember which to be honest. And they go to visit this town that one of their great 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 grandparents founded set by the sea they learned about their sexuality and stuff like that i think only one of them ends up going and the other one is in a mental health facility it's a whole thing um i just didn't love it i didn't love the romantic relationship and or the discovery that our heroine goes through it read a little bit like a jen bennett book without any of the charm of a jen bennett book so to me this was just like whatever so was it the worst thing i've ever read no it was five stars also no okay next book i will be honest with you was one of the first that i read off of this list and so my memory of it is not that great. It is Starfish by Kemi Don Bowman, which I gave four stars to. Another YA contemporary, are we shocked? Why the fuck did I put so many of these on this list? This book is about our heroine who is dealing with racism and hatred from her own mother. That's really the core of the story. Our heroine is dealing with so much. Her mom is so manipulative and gaslighty. And on top of that, she doesn't like the fact that her daughter is mixed race, even though she was married to a man who was not white. Doesn't make sense to me. Don't understand it. And yet, the relationship that was portrayed there was so real and so raw and I think was something that even if you haven't had the struggles of the main character, you can relate to in some way. I think a lot of us have complicated relationships with our parents or our mother or our grandparents or someone in our life. And I feel like even if the topics discussed weren't something that you can relate to, you can relate to this book in some way. And uh, I, I really did enjoy it when I read it. I think I read it for one of my Choose Your Own Adventure vlogs and it was definitely one of the high points of that video. Uh, but to be honest, I just can't really remember as much as I would like to about this book to really get you to read it per se. But it was a four star book, so I was close on putting that one on this list. It wasn't a five star, but it was definitely up there. And I feel like it was a pretty solid prediction. Next up, another YA contemporary. Oh my God, how are there so many on here? This one, however, was a five star read and it is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. I feel like this should come as no surprise to anyone. This was a fantastic story. It's about our main character, Brie, who really wants to be a hip hop star. And it is about her struggles to get there. She has kind of a tough home life and she's dealing with that and also kind of trying to prove herself being a female rapper. I loved this book. I thought it was really fantastic. Fantastic. Again, this is one that I read a while ago and I cannot really remember most of it. I think I read this, I distinctly remember reading it in summer of 2020. So it's been over a year since I last read it. I don't remember the details, but I do remember it's fantastic. I don't think I've read an Angie Thomas book that wasn't fantastic. I still need to read Concrete Rose. I think I'm actually probably going to put that on my 2022 five star predictions video, but this was really good. And uh, I'm glad I put it on the list because it did force me to read it. I feel like it would have just languished on my shelves otherwise because I don't pick up YA contemporaries anymore, to be honest, but I'm so glad I read this one. Next up, I have a few interesting ones for y'all. Three books that I decided to get rid of before I even read them for various reasons, some of which I will explain, some of which I won't really. First up is Never Knife by Jay Kristoff. I put this on my five star predictions, but to be honest, I had no desire to pick this book up between putting it on my five star predictions and this point. And I decided to unhaul the entire trilogy of UK hardcovers, which is just wild to me. I think for me, it was one of those series that was just so hyped that I felt like I needed to hop on the train. And with such beautiful naked hardcover, I was like, oh, I'll put them on my shelves. I'll get to them eventually. But eventually never came. I just never felt compelled to pick them up. I don't know how I feel about Jay as an author. I just, I don't know. I just didn't really want to read them. And I'm just unsure of how I feel about these sorts of stories anyway, these like assassin stories. I keep telling myself I like them and then I never want to pick them up. Do I actually like them? I feel like that's kind of my story with fantasy right now. I really want to like fantasy. I really want to pick up fantasy books, but I, I just don't know what I like anymore. So I'm kind of on a journey right now. And that journey was telling me not to read Nevernight. So I didn't read it and I unhauled it and you will see that book in an unhaul in December. Next up, we have Landline by Rainbow Rowell. 
kind of the same thing here. This is one that I actually tried to pick up twice and I just could not get into for whatever reason. I don't know, this idea of like a magical enchanted phone that connects you with your husband who you're kind of like in a bad point with. I don't know, it just wasn't screaming, read me. And then lastly, from the books that I unhauled before I could read is The Black Witch by Lori Forrest. I hauled this in the first place because I had this video idea that I thought was really cool and I just didn't end up doing it. I think I talked about it in an unhaul that I've already posted, but I just, I thought I could do a video where I read books that kind of were, I don't know, hit or miss at the time that people gave like two stars to, but some people loved. I was going to do this and like maybe the selection or I can't even remember to be honest at this point. Oh, The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead, but I didn't do it. And when I looked at the books that I had picked out for that video, I realized I didn't actually have a desire to read the books. I just wanted to make a cool video and I'm kind of not doing that anymore so much. I think you might have noticed on my channel. I try to be creative still, but I do try to pick up books that I actually want to read and uh, that video kind of worked against that. So I just, I didn't read any of the books. I've unhauled all of them since and The Black Witch is just one of those books. Next up we have All American Muslim Girl, which I gave four stars to. This book I remember really enjoying when I read it. Again, I think this is one that I read like mid 2020, honestly early 2020 I think, and I don't really remember that much about it. The only thing I truly remember is that this book is about a Muslim heroine who I want to say is white and no one at school really assumes that our heroine is Muslim. She is dating a guy whose father is kind of a racist and she has to kind of grapple with that and she also kind of I want to say reconnects with her religion. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really interesting story and interesting perspective that I'd never read before and I do try to read more stories with Muslim characters because I really enjoy them and I like seeing that representation in stories so this is a win for me even if it wasn't a complete five-star pick. Next, oh my god, how many Y contemporaries can be on one list? We have Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Toy. This was a three-star read for me. I have also since unhauled this book. I just, you know, it's a Y contemporary. At the end of the day, that's what it is, and there are very few at this point that really stand out to me, and this book stood out for some reasons, but none of those were really good reasons. Our heroine in this book, our main character, I keep saying heroine because I'm just such a romance bitch, right? I just can't pass up an opportunity to say heroine. Emergency Contact is about our main character and she has just started, I think, her freshman year at the University of Texas, which was appealing to me because that is the university I attended. I have very strong emotions and feelings tied to that school. I had a great time. So anyway, I was excited to read a book, sat there. Our main character is dealing with a lot because her mom is someone that she doesn't necessarily love that much. I mean, she loves her, but she's a complicated relationship because her mom is sort of like, I don't want to say the word milfy, but like that is sort of how she's characterized. She sort of gets a lot of wanted and unwanted attention from men. And this makes our main character uncomfortable. And it also makes the relationship a little bit weird. Her mom just doesn't seem to get her daughter and understand the desires of her uh, heart, I guess you could say. So they have a complicated relationship that is really the core of this story. And then on top of that, our main character starts dating and or becoming interested in this guy who is in an off again, on again relationship with someone who treats him really, really poorly. I just didn't like the overall energy and vibe of this story. I felt like it was super depressing. I didn't like anything that really happened. I could, again, appreciate the relationship that our main character had with her mom. But at the end of the day, I didn't care about the romance. And and the tone of this book was just brutal. Like I just did not want to read it. I didn't want to pick it up. You know, I appreciated the dialogue and like how authentic it was, I guess, to that like time period, age group, whatever, but God, I didn't have a good time reading this book. Next up is a book that I can't decide whether or not I want to give two or three stars to, and it is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I always want to say Kristen Hanna whenever I hear the word nightingale, and to be honest, there are some similarities between uh, the two authors writing. Okay, anyway, this book is a Russian inspired fantasy. It's about our main character whose mother has recently passed away and now she can see little like sprites and ghosts and shit. We don't really know kind of what they are. And we also get backstory and insight into the fact that there might be this like god of winter. Like he, he gusts wind and coldness and shit anytime he shows up. So that's kind of what we're working with presently. Our main character's mom passes away and her new stepmommy doesn't really like that our main character can see ghosts and sprites and fairies and shit and is upset about this and tries to punish our main character. Um, and then we also have this like Pope guy, not Pope, but like priest guy who comes to town and he tries to get all of these people to stop believing in these pagan gods and stuff. And things go really bad, real bad from there. The crops die, everyone's hungry, lots of people die, bad news, until we have our main character who saves everyone by getting with God of Winter, daddy. Except for not really. I, I just, I wanted to like this book because I love I love a fantasy, right? And this Russian inspired fantasy sounded so delightful, but I think it leaned into the historical fiction aspects a little bit too much. I feel like trying to pit 
paganism versus Christianity against each other is just uninspired, I think is what I would say. It's a little uninspired. I didn't really enjoy that aspect of this book. I feel like it would have been very strong had we had like an adult Farah esque character riding Winter Daddy's icicle all the way home. You know what I mean? Like, could it have just been like a romance? I would have appreciated that more, I guess. And you know what? That's not what this book set out and intended to do. I just didn't like it. And I feel like the I Study also didn't have much of a personality. And I just, I don't know. It wasn't horrible. I liked the writing a lot. And the beginning of the story was really promising, but it was so slow. I'm convincing myself now this is a two star book. <laughs> and grateful I read it, I will be unhauling it most likely along with the second book in the series, which sucks because I remember distinctly when I got that second book. It was on a trip and it was so delightful, but you know what? I can have the memories of that trip without owning either of these books. I will be getting rid of it. Two stars. Next up, we have Stalking Jack the Ripper, another book that I have since gotten rid of, and a book that is two stars. Wow, this sucked. I wanted to be a Carrie Maniscalco fangirl because I feel like her books are very hit or miss, more on the miss side for a lot of people. And I just wanted to like her books. I felt like the idea of Stalking Jack the Ripper sounded so promising. I'd heard so much about Thomas Cresswell and I was like, I'm gonna be a Cresswell bitch. I'm not, I'm really not. I didn't like him. I felt like he was kind of an irredeemable douchebag. And I just didn't really like Audrey Rose. Ugh, the two names, the double barrel name. I say that, I'm Chandler Ainsley, but no one calls me that, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. Moving on, we have the Darkest Part of the Forest. This is not a way contemporary, it's YA fantasy. And I gave it three stars, which is sort of surprising because I adore Holly Black. I've liked Holly Black ever since Tithe came out, which is saying a lot because those books were kind of a mess, but The Darkest Part of the Forest just didn't really connect with me. It was a little bit too on the modern day side of fantasy for me. And I know Holly Black's books like kind of meld those two worlds uh, of fantasy and of present day, but this one was too in the present day for me. And it felt a little bit jarring to read the fantasy elements in this contemporary setting. So yeah, maybe the moral of the story is no contemporaries for Chandler, unless it's a romance. This was just, it was whatever, three stars. Next up is a book that I picked up this year that I really, really enjoyed, and it is A Quiet Kind of Thunder. I gave this book four stars. It is about a girl with selective mutism and a generalized anxiety disorder, and a boy who is deaf. And it's about their relationship and how they navigate the world together with both of their disabilities. And I fucking loved it. It was so, so good. For a YA contemporary, this one was surprisingly delightful. It gave me slight Alice Oseman vibes. I feel like maybe because it's it's an English book. British, I guess, would be the more appropriate word, but I liked how it was told. I felt like it was relatable, and you could tell the author, I don't want to say you could tell the author isn't old, but you could tell that she does a good job at writing more authentic relationships, and uh, it, it worked for me. It really worked for me. I really enjoyed this book. I felt like the romance was really sweet, and it really spoke to that kind of, like, first love that you have, and I also think that the relationship between our main character, our female main character, and her best friend was really, really nice. It's nice seeing friends kind of go through some hardship but then come back together and like be there for each other. Loved it. Would recommend this one if you're looking for a wide contemporary. Now we're down to our last three books. You might be like, I think your math is off and you'd be correct, but not today. My math was off when I made the first video. I actually did like 19 five-star predictions instead of 20, even though it was supposed to be 20. Regardless, I've got three books left to talk about. First up, we have Black Iris. This is a book that I really expected to enjoy because I really liked Unteachable by Elliot Wake. It was one of the first books that I read by this author and I wanted to like this one, let's just say that. I didn't though. I really didn't understand a lot of what was going on and trying to articulate what this book is about, nearly impossible. So I'm not even gonna attempt to. Mildly sapphic, and I mean very mildly sapphic. I don't feel like there was enough payoff really for me to really enjoy this book as a romance. Yeah, honestly, now that I'm trying to think about it, my brain is like scrambled eggs. Like I just, I cannot, I cannot even articulate what this book is about. So I feel like that should say enough. I feel like Elliot tends to write really intensely lyrical stories that really set the tone and the mood. And this one is no exception, but it just isn't a tone or a mood that I really connected with. So if you want to read a better book, read Unteachable. That one, that one was good. And it really shows like the toxic side of student teacher relationships. Yes, yes, yes. Good one, really good one. Next we have the one book that I have not finished and I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and I was like, I'm gonna finish this book. And I've come to the conclusion that I think this could be a five-star book. I think it's unlikely that it will be, but it could be. But to find that out, I'm gonna have to give myself time to read this. I didn't wanna rush through it. I didn't want to force myself to read it when I didn't want to. It's The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I started this book twice. I think I've gotten to the same point both times that I've read it. And it's not that it's uninteresting to me. It's just that committing to an audio book that's this long feels like such such a commitment. I mean, committing feels like a commitment, unsurprising. It's such a long book. And being someone who makes videos, makes content, to commit that much time to one book seems like a lot. I just didn't know if I wanted my first time reading the book either to be something I vlogged. So I'm just sort of in a weird place with it, right? It's like, I want to read it. Do I have the time to read it? Can I read it? I will say, 
I am liking it so far. It is a good book. He is such a talented writer and especially in comparison with The Eye of the World, which I am a little bit of the ways into, I just, I appreciate his writing and his brevity, despite it being like a long ass book, really is intentional with his word choices. So I appreciate that. Uh, good book, but I, I can't, I can't say whether it's a five star read for you. Maybe I'll update you on my like next video, not the five star predictions, but like when I read those five star predictions in 2022, maybe I'll I'll get back to you. And then lastly, The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin, maybe? Book's right here. You can figure out the last name for yourself. I gave this book two stars. This was a book that was supposed to be a sweeping family saga. It was supposed to tell me something about life. It did not do that. I really didn't like this book. I really did not like the way this book ended. I just don't fully understand what the point of this book was. And I know for a fact that a lot of other people have enjoyed this book and there is a point to it. I just couldn't find that. Um, and I say that because my dear friend Zoe really loves this book. It's one of her favorites. And I think I put this book on this list for that reason. She said it was fantastic. I think she gifted this book to me for Christmas one year and I just didn't connect with it and I feel so bad about it. It's about four different siblings as they kind of embark and, and journey through life. At the very beginning of the story they are given predictions on when they will die and those predictions have an impact on the characters and you're left wondering is it fate? Is this person actually predicting things? Are the people kind of listening to the predictions? Like are they sabotaging themselves if you will? I thought that component to the story was really fascinating and really well done but it was all the stuff around it that I didn't care about. Like the individual journeys of the characters were exhausting to read and I'm gonna be honest with you the journey that our uh, first main character like the first POV the journey that he goes through as a gay man growing up during the AIDS crisis I found it kind of offensive to be honest and I mean it's not really my place to be offended but I don't feel like it was very well done I also think that the um, suicide plotline that is in this book was not handled uh, particularly well either so I didn't love it and I feel bad saying that because I know Zoe likes it and I know she got something out of it and I'm so glad she did because that's why books exist, right? Like to speak to people and to be people's voices and to be like such an integral part of people's identity and lives and I love that about books. I really do. Uh, but this one didn't work for me. Those are the 20-ish five-star predictions I had for 2020 and as you can tell not very many of those were five stars. I want to say it was like three or four but I am glad that I did this. I'm glad that I finally got to read books off of my physical TBR and got to explore some genres and some books that I don't necessarily pick up very often. I also think it taught me a lot about how much tastes can change in the matter of like a year or two. When I made that video in 2019 I put so many YA contemporaries on this list because I own so many of them but also because I just really liked them at the time. Time, I felt like those were the books that really gave the most emotional impact to me. And as I get older, I find that YA contemporary is just not necessarily a genre I connect with anymore. And I think that's really reflective of this video, this like reaction video to that two years later. It's been interesting. It's been fun. And I feel like I've learned a lot about my reading since doing this. I am real curious to see if my 2022 five-star predictions are going to be more accurate. Fingers crossed. I feel like you can't get any worse than this one. But again, I am glad that I did this exercise. And at the very least, it has showed me what I like, what I don't like, and has uh, led me to have more shelf room, if you will, because I'm unhauling a lot of these books. So I really appreciate you taking the time to click on this video and watch it. Uh, if you stay till the end, leave me a Santa emoji because I've got my Christmas stuff uh, back behind me along with Nugget. But I love y'all so much. Thanks so much for watching this video and until next Sunday.